Hi folks, RSBN founder and CEO Joe Seals here. Did you know there is nearly $1 trillion of infrastructure and pandemic funds yet to be spent? That's right, there's a massive amount of money that the lame duck administration is pushing hard to spend in their last few months. If the president is able to push these funds out, we could see another prolonged inflation surge, just like during COVID. And I'm sure you remember the terrible effects that high prices had on most Americans, but there's hope. A surge in prices can be beaten. A gold IRA from Birch Gold Group is the ultimate inflation hedge for your savings in uncertain times. To see how to protect your IRA or 401k, get your free info kit on gold by texting the word TRUMP to 989898. Birch Gold makes it seamless to roll over your retirement account while preserving your tax advantage status. Don't wait for the president's spending spree to tank the dollar further. Protect your financial future now. Text TRUMP to the number 989898 for your free info kit from Birch Gold. Opportunities before us. This election really isn't about the left versus the right. It's about we the people choosing our government and the choice between freedom versus tyranny. Nobody has a chronic disease burden like we have. Why are we allowing this to happen to our children? Ultimately, the only thing that will save our country is if we choose to love our kids more than we hate each other. What is going on here is deeper than politics. It is deeply spiritual. We are being called to rise above the hatred and the fear and the evil. We need to remember above and beyond that we must love our neighbors, that we must treat other people as we hope to be treated. You want to be a rebel? You want to be a hippie? You want to stick it to the man? Show up on your college campus and try calling yourself a conservative. America is going to reach heights that it has never seen before. The future is going to be amazing! Don't you want healthy children? Don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? Former Democrat, I will be a first time Trump voter tonight. The people dreamed this country. And it's the people who are making America great again. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. There ain't no doubt I love this land God bless 
today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA It's unbelievable. Think of it. This is it. This is the last one that we're going to have to do. And doing four of these in one day is a little difficult, but not really, because the love in every one of them has been incredible, just like this. So it makes it a lot easier. And I want to say a very special hello to Grand Rapids. It's been a special place. Remember, 2016, we were... We were given a 3% chance. You remember, we came to Grand Rapids. I said, how the hell are we going to lose? It was just like this. And I said, how are we going to lose? We're not going to lose. And it was a 3% chance, and then we won a little place called Florida, and it went to a, about a 7% chance, and then it went to an 11%. And then it went to 17%, you remember? And went that way, and then it went to about a 62% chance. And they had somebody in there going totally crazy. The woman, she became a fan. She was going crazy. Not on our side, on the other side. She was going crazy. But uh, we're uh, in very good shape. I have to tell you, we're way up in terms of the vote. You know, the Republicans are never up like that. And I don't want to talk too much about it, because I really want you to — I really want you to just assume that it's sort of even, and you're going to turn out tomorrow, and we're going to blow this thing away because, you know, we're leading. We're leading going in by hundreds of thousands of votes, but just pretend we're tied or losing by a little bit because we want to put on a display tomorrow of unity and everything. The progress that this party has made is incredible. It's very inclusive. It's inclusive of everybody including our great mayor right back there. That's a great — that is a great mayor, and he came through for us. But I just want to — I want to thank everybody, and a very special hello to Michigan. We're going to do some great things for Michigan. We're going to do great things for Michigan. 
We're going to bring the car business blazing back. You're not going to remember what it was like. We're going to we're going to make Detroit we're going to make Detroit greater than it ever was. You know, I've been hearing about Detroit for a long time. They've been talking about that miracle of Detroit. Well, I mean, look, we got to be honest. It hasn't happened, but it's going to happen now. It's going to happen and at levels that you never dreamt possible. So for you, for the auto workers who have been so incredible, you've been so incredible, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be very happy with the things we're doing. We killed the plant, as you know, in Mexico. The biggest plant in the world was going to be built in Mexico, and I absolutely killed it. But I'd like to begin by asking a question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Because over the past four years, Americans have suffered one catastrophic failure, betrayal, and humiliation after another. Kamala has delivered soaring prices. And true economic anguish at home, war and chaos abroad, and a nation destroying invasion on our southern border. Invasion of some of the greatest criminals in the world that are pouring into our country. And we're not going to take that. We're going to end that, like, immediately. And I happen to think it's bigger than the economy. And I think, you know, every poll shows the economy and inflation and then the border and the horrible things that are going on. And I don't agree with it. I think we have to focus on all of it. We do it all one time. But to me, when you allow thousands of murderers into our country, to me, when you allowed the drug kingpins of the world into our and terrorists into our country at levels that we've never seen before, to me, that's the bigger problem. We're going to solve it all, but that's the bigger problem. And we're going to have it taken care of very quickly. But my message to you and to all Americans tonight is very simple. We do not have to live this way. We don't have to live this way. We're not living good. Four years. What did they do that was good? Can you name one thing? I said to a group of people, I said to a group of people, what have they done? Everything's a disaster, including nobody even knows how to. Supposing President Xi of China wanted to call to ask a little question about war or Taiwan or anything. Who the hell does he call? We got a little problem in America. There's nobody to call. You know, they'll probably end up calling me. Maybe they'll call me. But, no. But who do you call? And remember, they ripped that presidency away from Joe Biden. Say what you want. We're not fans of Joe Biden. You know, I spent $150 million on him. We did, went through the convention. We never mentioned Kamala. Nobody knew who the hell she was. And all of a sudden, they picked Kamala, even though she was in last place. She came in number 13. They had 12 plus Kamala. She was considered the 13th. But then they wanted to be politically correct, so they picked Kamala. And they called her Harris. And nobody knew who Harris was. Like, call Harris. Who's Harris? The weird. You know, it's a very nice name, but it's a strange name because nobody knows who she is as her, so we have to call her Kamala. But uh, she was the least popular. She got no votes. She lost in the primaries to Joe Biden and everybody else. She was the first one out. She quit the first one, 22 people. She left. She never made it to the great state of Iowa. Never made it. And uh, now we're running against her. But they've, she's been exposed, you know, she's been exposed. She's a radical left lunatic who destroyed San Francisco. But we don't have to settle for weakness and incompetence and decline and decay. <laughs> That's a nice word, decay. That's what's happened. That's a nice word, decay. Can you imagine? And nobody will question it because it's true. With your vote tomorrow, we can fix every single problem our country faces and lead America, indeed, the world, to new heights of glory. But indeed, think of that statement, how beautiful that is. New heights of glory, that's what's going to happen. When we win the election and we're really well, look, it, the ball's in our hand. All we have to do is get out the vote tomorrow. You get out the vote, they can't do anything about it, we win.
one of their top people just got on television. I was coming in, and uh, they said, uh, these are not looking good, these numbers for them. This is very troubling. <laughs> At least he was honest. No, all we have to do, if we, if we get on our people, it's over. There's nothing they can do about it. It's nice when you have that, right, you know? In other words, to make you feel a little guilty, we would only have you to blame. <laughs> but we put ourselves in an unusual position. Never happened for — never happened where we're leading by hundreds of thousands of votes in the early stage vote. That's never happened before. We've always been losing by sometimes millions of votes. And, you know, you keep catching them on Tuesday, but uh, Tuesday comes along and you make it, or you don't quite make it, you're a little short. And then they cheat, and it makes it a little tougher. Because when you know, when you have open borders, transgender everything, high taxes, very high taxes, they're campaigning on the fact that they're going to raise everybody's taxes. And you have men playing in women's sports, You have to cheat. Who the hell is going to approve that stuff? Who's going to approve open borders with criminals pouring into our country by the millions? No, they have to cheat. They have to cheat, and they do, and they do it very well, actually. But I think we're in very good shape. We just have to share. You show up, and you're going to have the biggest victory. You know what? This will be the single greatest victory, politically speaking, in the history of our country. And when we win the election, only one day from now — do you know how that sounds? I started off saying, and when we win the election four years from now — that was terrible. That was so depressing, when we win the election four years from now. Then I said three years and two years and one year. Then I said six months, and I said, ooh, that's starting to get a little close. And then I said, five, four, three, two, one month. And then about three weeks ago, when we win the election in 21 days, it just seemed very far away. And now I say, when we win the election tomorrow, can you believe it? And what we've done, and this is a sad occasion in certain ways, because I think we did like 930 rallies from the very beginning. That's a lot of rallies. And, and you know, and remember, if you make one slip up, and you know, I'm a person, as you probably noticed, I have this beautiful speech. I haven't really even gotten to it yet. One of these one of these moments, I'll start giving you some beautiful things to listen to and some and honestly, some terrible things to listen to. Terrible. What's happened, what they've done to our country is horrible. Horrible. But — and by the way, don't you like a president that doesn't need to use a teleprompter? Isn't there something refreshing? But I think I heard somebody say it's like 900, maybe a little more than 900 rallies. And, you know, rarely do they ever catch me making even a little mistake. I go through rally after rally, 10, 20, 30, and then I say, the wrong. <laughs> they say, he's cognitively impaired. No, we're not. <laughs> I'll let you know when that time happens. It could happen, but hopefully it's not going to be for a long time. He pronounced the word. He slurred the word. And I hate to go back, you know? A lot of guys, they'll be talking and they'll make a mistake. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let me go back. When you do that, it's over for a good speech. You can't do that. You just have to blaze through it and hope that they didn't hear the mistake. <laughs> now, when Winston Churchill, who's a great speaker, he was actually a stutterer, 
a tremendous stutterer, and he became one of the greatest orators. And But when Winston Churchill made a mistake, he didn't go, uh, excuse me, and go back. He just blazed through it. But if I do it, they say, he's cognitively impaired. There's something wrong with him. These people are sick. Those people, look at them. Oh, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. But uh, this has been an incredible journey. And it's very sad, in a way, because, you know, we've done all these. And this is the last one. But here's the good news. All we were doing is putting ourselves in a position to win, which we can do tomorrow very easily if we show up. Just so you know, if we show up, they can't win. They can't. They mathematically can't win because they're so far behind. If you don't show up, I guess. But I, here's the one thing I will say. Show up anyway. But they have no enthusiasm. She had a rally today. She couldn't have had more than 100 people there. And I had all four stadiums were full, but she had a rally. And she was screaming, we're going to win, we're going to win. And they wouldn't follow her. They wouldn't say it. She, did you see that clip? I'd like to put it up. The problem is I don't put up too many clips. I have the most beautiful clips. The problem is the press won't follow them. I had a friend. Yeah, I had a friend a couple of weeks ago. We made these gorgeous clips, and actually gorgeous in one way, but horrible in another, showing the death of ch children and all the damage that they've caused with the open border. And all they have to do is take those cameras. Look at all those cameras. Oh. And all they have to do is move them like an inch over and an inch up. I have often times. Well, not too many. I have often times screens right behind me. All they have to do is just move it up two inches like this. And they don't do it because they're fake news. They don't want to show what's on the screen. So, show. so I don't. So I, I'm having a modestly good hair day. Look at that. Look. Modestly good. Not the best. I'm not thrilled. But it is what it is. No, that's great. But what I do see behind me are beautiful people, great workers, people that are proud and they love our country. That's what I really see. Nice. Beautiful. So it puts us, assuming we can win tomorrow, which I think we should be able to do pretty easily, it's in our hands, right? It's in our hands. It's totally in our hands. Oh, it's today. Oh, it's today. Oh. oh! <laughs> Thank you. That's today. Wow. Can you imagine a crowd like this at like one o'clock or some ridiculous time in the morning? On a, on a Monday slash Tuesday, right? Think of that. What a compliment. And it is so she had nobody at these rallies. That's, you know, that's a poll. Look, Mr. Wall, look at Mr. Wall over there, this guy. It was always my ambition to buy a suit like that and wear it one time. Well, I came in in a sanitation uniform last week, and that worked out pretty good. Because Joe Biden, in one of his crazy moments, said that we were all garbage. But they've shut him down. They took the election away. They walked in and they said, uh, you're not running anymore. You're out. Can you believe? They stole the election from a president. They stole the election. Can you imagine that? They said, you're not. You know, they use the word coup. I, I think it's worse than a coup in a sense, because a coup, there's a little back and forth. They said, Joe, you're out. That crazy, horrible human being, Nancy Pelosi, who cheats like hell, she sold. She sold. You know what she said last night? She said, and, and there's another guy, the guy. How do you explain that guy? They say, well, we'll get ready to start impeaching him. Now, how bad, how bad are people like that? They're just trouble for our country. They're bad, sick people. They took two impeachments and they wasted all that time and money and energy. 
Hi folks, RSBN founder and CEO Joe Seals here. Did you know there is nearly $1 trillion of infrastructure and pandemic funds yet to be spent? That's right, there's a massive amount of money that the lame duck administration is pushing hard to spend in their last few months. If the president is able to push these funds out, we could see another prolonged inflation surge, just like during COVID. And I'm sure you remember the terrible effects that high prices had on most Americans, but there's hope. A surge in prices can be beaten. A gold IRA from Birch Gold Group is the ultimate inflation hedge for your savings in uncertain times. To see how to protect your IRA or 401k, get your free info kit on gold by texting the word TRUMP to 989898. Birch Gold makes it seamless to roll over your retirement account while preserving your tax advantage status. Don't wait for the president's spending spree to tank the dollar further. Protect your financial future now. Text TRUMP to the number 989898 for your free info kit from Birch Gold. When we should be focusing on making America great again, they're horrible people. I mean, Nancy Pelosi started with nothing. She's worth $200 million. You know, she sold, she had a big position in Visa, and she sold it. And the day after she sold it, the Justice Department announced that they were under this massive investigation. You're a stock guy, right? They're under a massive investigation, so I don't know what happened, but I don't imagine the stock went up. History would tell you the stock went down. Did it go down a lot? It went down a lot. So they have this big position. She sells her stock. Hours after she sells her stock, they announce that Visa is under massive investigation. The stock goes tumbling down. She's a crooked person. She is a bad person. Evil. She's an evil, sick, crazy Oh, no. It starts with a B, but I won't say it. I want to say it. I want to say it, but Franklin Graham said, sir, I love your speaking ability, and I love your storytelling. But honestly, it would be even better if you wouldn't use foul language. And I don't use much, you know, every once in a while. And it's never a real bad word. It's, you know, it's like never bad. And uh, so I try to adhere, but he's wrong about one thing. It is a little better when you use the foul language, because there's more <laughs> emphasis. No, but these are bad people. These are bad. Uh, Adam Shifty Shift. I call him Pencil Neck. He's got the smallest neck I've ever seen. He's got about a four. And he's got the biggest head. So I don't know how the neck can hold the head. He's an unattractive guy, both inside and out. And this guy can end up being a senator. But don't worry, we've been beating him for eight years. We've been beating these people. We've been beating them. They impeach me, we win. They send me down the Records Act, the Records Act. And we won in Florida. We won. We win. But, you know, we have to take a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of money, which is what they want. A lot of time, a lot of money. This way we can stop the one guy we don't want to fight is Trump. We can stop him from getting the Republican nomination. And I got the Republican nomination record time. Record time. And let's keep going, and maybe we can stop him from winning the presidency. But uh, that's looking pretty good tomorrow, I'll tell you. They give, they give us probably a 95. What do you think, a 95 percent or something like that? But don't believe it. Don't believe it. Go out and vote. Remember the story of Hillary. Just remember. That's why I tell you the story. She was in bad shape when she called me up that night. And by the way, she called up and conceded, and then spent seven years on saying how she was a good sport. Oh, she's a wonderful, she's a lovely person, Crooked Hillary. But you know what, she's smart. And, but she wasn't like, she lied a lot. I mean, a lot, but nobody lies like this Kamala. Kamala. He will not ever frack in Pennsylvania. My whole case is fracking, and 
He will open the borders immediately. No, no, no. I'm going to close the borders. However, if people want to come in, they can come in legally. They have to come in through a process. We need people. But Kamala is — I mean, this is known. She's a very low IQ person. And we don't need a low IQ individual. We've had that for four years. And our country's going down the drain. We're going to turn our country around. I will end inflation very quickly. You know how we're going to end it? By drilling and drilling and drill, drill, drill. Energy is going to bring everything down. Energy is going to bring it down. And I will stop the invasion of criminals coming across our border. I will strengthen our military. I will restore peace in the world. And I will rescue the American dream. We're going to have the American dream back soon. Together, we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. And we will launch the most extraordinary economic boom the world has ever seen. If you vote for Lion Kamala, you will have four more years of misery, failure, and disaster our country may never recover from. I don't believe that our country can take any more of this I, I, without just gone. I don't believe it can take any more. It's going to be uh, — can't take this. This is — this is — this is abnormal abuse, abnormal abuse. And uh, I heard somebody said the wall. I built 571 miles of wall, which is much more than I said I was going to build. And, you know, it really worked. Walls work. Two things work. What are the two things? Walls and wheel. They're the only two things that never get obsolete, right? Walls and wheels. A wall and a wheel. It's always going to be around. Other things, they have the beautiful computers. You know, you buy a computer. Oh, it's the greatest. Two weeks later, it's obsolete. That goes on. I don't know how people do it. We have the king of computers. We have the king of everything endorsed me. Elon Musk. And he brought that rocket ship down two weeks ago. I never said 22 stories. It's like monster. You don't know, is it big or small? It's a monster. 22 stories. And you know that story. I've told it a couple of times. I love the story because I, I really — the best part is I'm talking to one of the most important guys in the world, and I say, wait a minute, could I just watch something? I see something on tel — I have the television muted, right? I'm looking at this crazy racket. And I saw it leaving a little while before, and it was all beautiful white. Now it's absolutely burned to a crisp. You know, it goes 10,000 miles an hour. The heat is at levels that nobody can experience. So it's a little, you know, rough. It's a little rough on the paint job. And it's coming in, and I'm watching, and I'm holding this very important person, one of the most important people. But, you know, when you were the president, and now it's very possible, like maybe 95 percent, that you're going to be the president again, they hold. No, they hold. So I say, uh, do you mind holding for a minute? I have to see this. And I put the phone down. That guy was holding, like, for an hour and a half. I don't, he never got off the phone. He, I wish he would have hung up. I would have felt better. Because I picked up the phone later. I said, oh, wow. Hello? Hello? He goes, hello. Anyway, but it, it was so exciting. So I'm watching it. And this monstrous thing is going down, right? And it's coming down. It's, first of all, it's doing all sorts of flips up in the air. This, I would not want to be on that sucker. I don't care how good Elon is. I said, Elon, you wouldn't get me in that ship under any circumstances. But it's coming down. It's a little rough. And now, all of a sudden, it starts to slow down as it gets to the ground. Then it starts to move over. Then it gets a little bit out of control, it looks like. A little out of — and the left part of the bottom is going to hit rip — just rip that big gantry. That's the — you know, whatever the hell it is that holds it. <laughs> and it's coming in. Ah, oh, and I didn't know it was Elon's. I just assumed, you know, he loves this stuff. He's in a class. But it's coming in, and it's going to rip the gantry. I say, oh, this is bad. This is going to be bad. I close my eyes. All of a sudden, wow, you have this massive flame coming out of the left-hand side of the bottom. It was this big jet engine. It pushes it away. And 
it's coming down, and then it settles into a plate, and then those arms grab it like you grab your baby, just like you grab your little baby. And it hugged it and just put it down, and it, there it was. There it was. And I called Elon. I said, was that you? He said, yes. And he said, and by the way, he said this. And by the way, this is something I'd never said because I didn't even think of it before when I told this story. He said, and by the way, I'm heading up to Pennsylvania to campaign for you. That was two weeks ago. He's still there. Can you believe it? Because he considers the election more important than rockets, more important than anything. He helped us out a lot in North Carolina and parts of Georgia where they needed, desperately needed, the Starlink. I had no idea what Starlink. They called me up. They called me up in Georgia. Elon's incredible. He has Starlink. He's got — everything has to do with stars and stuff. Very complex stuff. No, he's amazing. But, sir, I know that you know Elon Musk because I read your endorsement. You know, he says it's the most important endorsement he'll ever make. It was such a nice thing. And he said he wants to help. And I didn't know he was going to help to this extent. He went up. He won the big case today, too. He won the case. Huh? Because I don't know, he did something that I, I don't know what he was doing, but he did something with lotteries. And, you know, he's in a different. He's amazing. I'm going to do lotteries and this and that and make your life fun. And he's having a good time. You know, he usually is in a lab and he's happy there. All of a sudden, he's escaped the lab and now he's out. And the public adores him. He's a great guy. The public absolutely adores him. But the man from North Carolina, great guy. You know, North Carolina was hit so hard with the water. The hurricane was essentially a massive pile of water. It was a big water hurricane, the biggest we've ever had. And they were so flooded. Areas that had never virtually seen water were, had, were turned out to be lakes. They ripped houses, trees. Everything was ripped down by the power of the tides that were going back and forth. It was terrible. And this man said, uh, if you could ask him for help with Starlink. We cannot get it. It's very hard to get. And I called Elon, and he got it immediately for them. He got it so much that <laughs> he had it there immediately. So much that, that you know, they couldn't even believe it. He said, this has saved a lot of lives. They, they had no communication in North Carolina, which, by the way, we're leading. In fact, somebody said, they picked up stakes. There's no more ads. There's no more ads. That's usually a good sign. That's usually a sign that they're not going to win. But one of the reasons they're not going to win is because FEMA did such a bad job. So FEMA, you know, we had a great FEMA. We did good. But they spent most of their money, as you know, on illegal migrants coming in. They spent, they spent so much money that they didn't have the money to take care of the people from North Carolina. But we will be there on January 20th, because on January 20th, that's when you were still there. But they pulled up stakes. Historically, when you pull up stakes and stop advertising and leave, historically, you're in pretty good shape in this state. Is that correct, politically? Because I haven't done this as long as some of the as well and as long as — well, I think I've done it better, actually, because I ended up being president, so I probably — but some of our great politicians have done this for a lot longer than me. So let me ask you, all of these senators and — when you pull up stakes and leave — historically, Doug Burgum was so incredible. He really is, isn't he? Is he a class act? His wife is much better. She blows him away, right? Catherine is much better. But, Doug, when you pull up stakes and you stop advertising, doesn't that generally mean that it's over, right? It's over. No. Doug is cautious. He doesn't want to — he thinks it's a trick question. <laughs> no, it means it's over. And uh, I think it's over in a lot of places. I think we're going to see some incredible stuff tomorrow. But, but it, won't, it won't matter. It, it won't matter. As long as you — as long as you go out and vote, it's, nothing's going to matter, because it's in our — you know the expression, the ball is in their hands, the ball is in our hands, I can't do a thing about it. And now you're going to go out there later today. Yeah. 
and you're going to show us something and vote for me, and I will deliver rising wages, soaring incomes, and a colossal surge of jobs. You're going to, we're going to use things. What's the most beautiful word in the dictionary? We're going to create wealth, opportunity for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. But I have to tell you one quick story, because I'm so proud. They're going to build this great big plant. They're building it. They're going to build it. China's going to build a plant, and it's going to destroy Michigan. Destroy it. Destroy Detroit. Everyone's going to move out. And I heard about it through a friend of mine that builds plants. That's what he does. He builds plants. He builds them better than anybody. John. Let's just call him John. And he was sitting there, and I was at the Economic Club of Detroit a couple of weeks ago. But I told John a year ago, I want to see a plant. And he said, well, I'll have to take you to Mexico. I said, I don't want to see a plant. I want to see a plant here. I want a big one. He said, we don't really do too many big ones in the United States anymore. I said, what is that all about, Mexico? He said, well, China's building some of the biggest plants anywhere in the world. They're building them in Mexico. And I said, well, I'm not happy about that. I don't want to see the damn plant in Mexico. It wouldn't look right if I'm in Mexico looking at plants. Do we agree, sir? It wouldn't look right. And uh, so he said, all right, look, I say, Forget it. Then I thought about it, and I was making the speech in Detroit, and I said, a couple of weeks before, I said, if they want to build a plant in Mexico owned by China so that they can save all of the costs associated with bringing their cars and all of the things, I'm going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car coming out of that plant. And if that's not enough, I'll make it 200, 300, 500, 800. I don't give a damn what it is. And they're not going to have one car made in that plant that ever crosses that border, which is right next to them. Anyway, so I see John in the audience, and I gave them that notice a little before, and it was public. And I see him, and I send my people. I say, after I speak, make sure he comes to the back. I want to see him backstage. So I see John. I say, John, how's that big monster plant that's going to rip apart our country, but it's going to hurt South Carolina, Tennessee, and all the other places that do a lot of cars? It's going to hurt everybody. It's going to hurt the country. How is that plant doing? He said, sir, they've given it up because they think you're going to win, and they think you're going to tariff them, and they think they're going to lose their share. And, sir, they've given up that plant. It's not going to be built anymore. So I saved Michigan, and I saved Detroit, and we're going to let them build that plant. But you know where we want them to build it? Right here, we want them to build it. And then they won't have any tariffs to pass. They won't have any tariffs, and they're going to use you to operate that big sucker, and it's, they can build as big as they want with no tariffs, I said. Let them know we'd love to have their investment. They're going to build it right here in Detroit, or at a minimum, they're going to build it someplace in the United States, and they won't have any problems. So that's the same. So I saved Detroit and Michigan a lot. That alone, and I did that without even being president. How about that? They said he's going to win. They told John, we think Trump is going to win, and he's not going to let us make anything, and he's going to do things that we don't know. This guy is crazy. Because, you know, I charge China hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes and tariffs. They paid us. Not one other president. And, you know, we're going to get along great with China. We're going to get along good. I want to get along with them. President Xi was great. Until COVID came, then I wasn't so thrilled with him. But we did a great job in that. You know, we, get, we went back. Nobody knew what the hell it was. We did a great job. We get credit on our military. No wars. We did no wars. I had no wars. Remember when crooked Hillary Clinton? Remember when crooked Hillary was screaming during a debate, he's going to charge wars, he's going to have wars, he's going to prosecute wars all over the place. Look at him, he's a very volatile person. I'm actually not. I'm a very calm person. She's the one that's volatile. But he said he's a very volatile person. He'll say, no, I stopped the wars with my being volatile. Nobody had a war. We didn't have any wars, except that we finished a war that we had. We beat ISIS. 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate was taken down. And it was done in a matter of weeks. 
when our stupid generals, our terrible generals, that you know, the, the guys up top, like Millie, like Kelly, real losers. Kelly was dumb as a rock. I'll never do that again. I let people, I say, give me a letter of resignation. Yes, sir, I'd like to say. I said, you get, just give me. You know, Biden never fired anybody. That's why he never had a bad book written about him. No, and also, number two, nobody cared. <laughs> When I fire somebody, every major publisher in the world, will you say something bad? I had one person who was so complimentary. Sir, you're the greatest president that ever lived, blah, blah, blah. Then she gets a, a show, but they only want to hire her if she's, I have all these letters. There's never been a better president. She goes in the show. I didn't like him. He was terrible. What a terrible human being. These people are sick, but you know what? All we can do is keep winning. That's all. Win, win, win. But a vote for Trump means your groceries. Such a word I hear all the time, because I do like to mix it up with people, more so than my consultants. I think the people are much smarter than my consultants. My consultants are good, but I get much better. Like, people say groceries, right? Who, I haven't used that. You know, such a sort of an old term. They say my groceries are so much more. I haven't, you know, the term is just like an old term. And it's a beautiful, but they say about my groceries were so expensive, they'll be cheaper. Your paychecks will be higher. Your streets will be safer and cleaner. Your communities will be richer. And your future as an American will be much better than it ever has been when I get in. Because this will be the golden age of America. And that's what I'm calling it. I'm telling the press. I hope you put it in. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? The golden age. I like to brand. I like to brand things like I brand Pocahontas. And, you know, I, have a, I do a lot of branding. I'm one of the greatest branders in the world. A lot of them were Republicans, so, but they're all now friends of mine, so I can't talk. Some of my greatest branding was on the Republicans during the primaries, but they're all friends of mine, most of them. Uh, some of them. Yeah, most of them are. Most of them are, but you know, I don't talk about that. They once, once the battle is over, I take those words, I put them away permanently in some cases. <laughs> On occasion, I'll bring them back out. <laughs> but just a few months ago, in a beautiful field in Pennsylvania, an assassin tried to stop our great movement, greatest movement in history. <laughs> but that brush with death did not stop us by any means. It only made us more determined to finish the job that we had only just started. That was not a pleasant day, I will tell you. That was not a pleasant day. But many people say that God saved me in order to save America. Many people have seen it so many times. And with your help, we will fulfill that extraordinary mission together. We're going to fill it together. We are going to fulfill it together. It's a beautiful expression, and, you know, I think it might be true. I have sons that are here right now, Don and Eric, and they're, they're great people. But they're really great shooters. They're like top-of-the-line shooters. They know so much about it. They say it was almost impossible for somebody, yeah, a miracle. It was, it was a miracle. That's the miracle right up there, right? But I didn't realize that. But from the distance that they were, they say it was a miracle. Well, if I didn't turn to the right to look at that beautiful graph that we had up having to do with illegal immigration. So illegal immigration saved me, can you imagine? And speaking of that graph, let me see that graph. I love it so much. I love it. I love it. I hug it and kiss it every night. I take it to bed with me. My wife thinks I'm crazy. I bring it to bed with me. Look, if I don't put that up, and it's never there. It's always there or there, but usually it's on the left. So if I look to the left, I'm gone. If I looked over there, but it was like, it's something happened. Something happened. Something up there happened. 
No, but think of it. So I said, just like I did right now, the shoot is right there, right exactly 90 degrees. That crazy guy, right there. And I said, let me see the graph. I said, what the hell was that? But if I didn't turn, it goes a little, it's not good. You don't want to see that. So it was uh, a miracle or a gift from God, maybe. Crazy. And when Don and Eric, who are really great shooters, they heard that, and then they heard the, the gun, gun. They know exactly the gun, the AR-15. It's supposed to be very accurate and all that stuff. And this guy wasn't, you know, he was at the range all the time shooting. He was supposed to be a good shooter. They said a bad shooter would hit it almost every time, a bad shooter. Uh, Don said it's the equivalent of sinking a one-foot putt. Then he put it in golf terms. I said, that's not good. Because for those that don't play golf, it's almost impossible to miss a one-foot putt. And uh, so it's amazing. So they were shaken up. They were uh, — they couldn't believe it. They actually said God did that because they didn't believe that they could — now, it wasn't a miss. I mean, there wasn't — ripped the hell out of it. But, but I consider that a miss. It ripped it, it ripped it up pretty good. And it was a very bloody mess. And the doctor, who was great in Butler, he said, sir, I want you to go with me to buy a lottery ticket, because I've seen this. I've been doing this for 35 years, sir, and I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anyone come out of it with that gun from that range. I said, it's — he said, I want to buy a lottery ticket with you tonight. And I said, well, doctor, you know, uh, let's not do that. Let's see if we can get this sucker stop bleeding. <laughs> but he told me the ear is the bloodiest part. You get hit in the ear. If something to do with cartilage, it's uh, — so they thought I was hit all over. I said, I wasn't hit all over because I was down. And I wasn't hit all over. I said, I was hit in the ear. Now get me up, get me up. They said, sir. And they were touching all over this place because it was so bloody. They said, sir, you've been hitting other. Lo I said, I'm telling you, you know, it's funny when I was the word surreal, right? When I was got to the White House, I was standing right outside and then inside the Lincoln bedroom, the bedroom of Abraham Lincoln, his wife, his son, Tad, who died, actually, as a very young boy, very young. It was a very rough time for them. They were uh, suffering tremendous melancholia. You know, they called it — they were melancholy. Melancholia, they called it, not depression. It's the same thing, but in those days, they call it melancholia. But I was in the Lincoln bedroom, so famous, all the furniture just the way it is. And he was very tall. He was six foot six. That's like the equivalent of a Baron Trump today. You know? Who's a lot taller than six six? <laughs> He's a good looking guy, but he is tall. And uh, but he was six foot six. In those days, very unusual, but he was tall. And then you put his hat on, which was another foot, right? So he was a pretty tall guy. But the bed was very long. You could see it was elongated. But I was there, and it was like a really surreal. I was with the first lady, who was very popular, who got the number one book in the country. Can you believe it? Call Miranda. Go buy it. Go buy that book. Go buy that book. It's great. I was a little nervous when I started reading it. I said, this could be very bad for me. Releasing a book before the election could be very dangerous to me. But no, it's a great book, and she's a great writer, actually. She wrote a note at the convention. Remember the note she wrote? It was so well-crafted that these guys right here wanted to put it as part of the platform. It was unbelievable. The book is unbelievable. So go get it for Christmas or something. But it was just uh, when I was in the Lincoln bedroom, it was a surreal experience. It was like an outer body, outer body they call it, experience. And um, it just was like it was something unbelievable. I said, can you believe this is where we are? And, and I was not a Washington person. I was only there 17 times, according to the fake news. I was — but I think it's right. I was only there 17 times in my entire life. I wasn't — 
But, and I was a New York guy, but, and which, you know, now I'm very much a Washington guy. I know the good ones, the bad ones, people. I know the, the dumb ones, the smart ones. I know a lot about the people. I didn't know anything about the people. I had to rely. And we still did. We did great. We had mostly great, great, the trade people, the war people. We had a lot of great people. But when I was on the ground, it, there was no surreal experience. I knew I was shot in the ear. And I was telling Secret Service, and let me tell you, they were damn brave. I went down fast because, I mean, I looked, there was blood all over my hand. I said, this is not the normal situation. It's either the largest mosquito in history or I got hit by a bullet. And I followed my hand down. And uh, I think people were also shouting, get down, get down. I think it was. But I went down, and I'm telling you, I had I guess seven Secret Service agents follow me. They were very brave. I'm telling you, those bullets were flying over our head. And, uh, you know, you can't forget that. Can't forget that. Those bullets, and I heard those bullets going. I said to somebody, how fast were they going? They gave me some mathematical number. I said, no, I want to know in miles per hour. And I think it was 3,200 miles per hour. Hour. You know, think of that. You know, a car, you're going fast at 70 or 80. These are 3,000-something. And those suckers were going over my head. There were eight of them. Total, it was a total of eight shots fired. And then it was a shot by a Secret Service uh, sniper. Amazing. One bullet he used. But I think we also had help from one of the police snipers. He hit the uh, stock of the gun or something. And we appreciate that very much. But it was amazing. But when I was down there, I was totally aware. I said, no, get me up. Get me up. Because I was speaking in front of a massive. You couldn't even see the end of it. Now, when we had the celebration honoring Corey, the firefighter, great guy, when we had that celebration, we had 100, 101,000 people. And that's when I really got to see the real — that's where I really got to see the real Musk, because I invited him up, and he's always like in a lab. And it's almost like he was released. And I said, you have to come up here, Elon, just come up. And he looked out, and he was so happy. I think he loves people. And he started doing jumping jacks and stuff behind me, right? He was so happy. I think he's going to run for office against me. I'm very concerned. <laughs> no, he's great. It was great. But he was so happy. And it was a great celebration. But when I was down, it was — there was no feeling like I had in the White House. I mean, I totally was aware of everything. But had I not made that turn, I wouldn't be with you tonight. And that would have been — that would have been bad. And I hope that's right. I hope that's right. I hope that God did put me here to — to really save this country. Because this country's in big, big trouble. This country's in big trouble. I hope so. To every person and every citizen across this land, I am asking for the honor of your vote. I don't want your money. Most people want your money. I don't want any money. I don't want — all I want you to do is go out today. Sounds a little strange. Go out today. Meaning go out in a few hours, okay? This guy's complicated, because it sounds so much better when you say tomorrow, when it's night. But that's okay. I want to be exactly accurate for them. But go out today and vote. And I guess 7 o'clock or whatever, whatever time it is, doesn't matter. And we're going to have the greatest victory in the history of our country. And as your president, I will fight for you every single day with every breath in my body. Together, we will save this country, this great country that we love. We will defeat the corrupt system in Washington. Because I'm not running against Kamala. I'm running against an evil Democrat system. These are evil people. 
I wasn't running against I wasn't running against Biden either. He was stuck in a basement. I didn't even run against him. I mean, no, we're running against a very evil system, and we have to defeat that system. And America's future will be an absolutely incredible one. As we stand on the brink of rescuing our country, I want to take a moment to thank the millions of hardworking men and women who are the heart and soul of this, the greatest movement of all time. Because it's you much more so than me, frankly. You're incredible people. You built this country, and you're going to save this country. But you're incredible people. You're really incredible people. And as I said in the very beginning, this isn't my campaign. This is your campaign. This is a great campaign that's — now it's nine years, and we've been fighting side by side every step of the way. We've been together. That's why it's not even hard. People say to me, like, very successful people, how do you stand up and talk in front of these people? And it's sort of easy, because they love. It's love in the, these rooms. I just left Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, fly up here, and the love was the same. It's such love, and it's not hard to do. It's, you know, it's much harder to do when you have people screaming at you. And, but there's love in this room. There's, I think there's love in the whole country. I think it's a much bigger movement than we even understand. I think we're going to end up getting numbers that are far greater than we would expect. But you've given your time, your money, and your whole heart for this cause. And your support means more than anything you can even understand. It's, uh, it's amazing. I love you all. You're very special. This is my last. My last rally, can you believe it? The rallies, these big, beautiful rallies, there's never been anything like it. And there never will be anything like it. And it just happened. It caught on. And I think it caught on because our country's in trouble. And, you know, I happened to be a messenger that was able to tell you what you knew, because most people understand it. Most people with common sense, we're the party of common sense, they understand it. But this is all you need to know. I mean, Joe and Kamala broke it, and I will fix it. I'll fix it fast. And America will be bigger and better and bolder and richer and safer and stronger than ever before. It's going to be all of those things. The presidency requires strength, courage, and grit. And in a little while, you have to stand up and tell Kamala that you've had enough. You can't take it anymore. You're destroying our country. You were a terrible vice president. You destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed San Francisco. And she worked when she was Attorney General of California. She worked along with a lot of her friends out there, like Gavin Newscomb, the governor, one of the worst governors in history. And destroyed the state. I mean, more people moved out than moved in last year. First time ever. That's never happened before. You're going to say, Kamala, you're horrible at your job. You don't know what you're doing. You're a low IQ individual. We want smart people. We want cunning people. We're dealing with the smartest people in the world. We don't want you negotiating nuclear deals because you, you don't know what the word nuclear means. Kamala! You're fired. Get the hell out of here. You're fired. Get the hell out of here. You want to ruin our country. If we win Michigan, we win the whole thing. The whole thing. Over the past four years, Kamala has orchestrated the most egregious betrayal that any leader in American history has ever inflicted on our people. She was given the authority to run the border by Sleepy Joe, because he wanted to go to bed and he wanted to sleep. He had only one thing he wanted to do, and that's sleep. So he made her the border czar. Now she, <laughs> she's trying to deny it. By the way, the Border Patrol two weeks ago gave us the strongest the strongest endorsement you've ever heard. 
They said he's the greatest president in history and the best president on the border by a factor of 10. And I said to them, does that mean I'm better than Abraham Lincoln and George? What? Yes, sir, you're better than both of them. I had one problem. I had one of the guys that came up, and, you know, they all, like 10 guys, they all made speeches. He's like 36. He said, sir, you're the greatest president in my lifetime. I said, I like the first guy better. I like Lincoln and Washington better than 36 years, right? But he meant well. But you know what? I was, in terms of the border, what we did, we built all that wall. We built an extra 200 miles. They could have flipped it up in three weeks. You know that. It was all built. They sold it for scrap metal for five cents of the dollar, so much. And that's when I realized they actually want open borders. She has violated her oath, eradicated our sovereign border, and unleashed an army of gangs and criminal migrants from prisons and jails, insane asylums and mental institutions. And these people are all coming into our country. Are you okay down there? Is somebody hurt? Oh, is somebody hurt? Oh, I saw you looking on the floor. I thought somebody was hurt. Oh, okay. We don't want our people to be hurt, right? We don't want that. But all around the world, they come from Venezuela. They come from the Congo and Africa, not just from South America. They come from all over the world. And they're stealing countless American lives. They're killing a lot of our people, a lot, far more than anybody thought even possible. The day I take the oath of office, the migrant invasion ends, and the restoration of our country begins, it begins immediately. The United States is now an occupied country. Who would have believed somebody that's running for president and perhaps will be president in less than 24 hours, or? Or maybe it will take these machines that we pay so much for two weeks. Can you believe it? You know, if you used very highly sophisticated watermark papers, very so it's more sophisticated than the machines. Paper, highly sophisticated. Okay, if you used paper, and if you used voter ID, and if you had one day, and you, in addition to voter ID, you have a proof of the fact that you're a citizen of our country, which would be nice, you would have the results tabulated, like in France, at 37 million people. The results were tabulated at 9.30 in the evening. They had a winner, they had a loser, and they went home. And here's the other thing. I know nobody's very cost-conscious anymore. 8% would be the cost compared to the cost of these very highly complex machines. And Elon Musk told me, he probably knows more about computers than any man in the world, he said that uh, machines don't work because they're easily violated. Now, this is the smartest guy in the world, the guy that runs rockets with computers, and uh, saying the computers are far more important than the engines. I mean, nobody knows anything like this. But if you used paper, it's 8% the cost of the other. It's more accurate. And you don't have 12-day waits? And then what the hell's happening in the inside of those machines if you wait? We want the answer tomorrow, tonight. We want the answer tonight. They spend all this money, they spend all this money, and old-fashioned paper is much less expensive. And you know what? It's more accurate. It's much better. They just, something's going on with this. I mean, what the hell are they doing? But we want the, we don't want to wait 10 days, 12 days, three days, two days, or two hours. We want the answer tonight. So we live in an occupied country, and I will tell you, we will 
be an occupied country no longer. This will take very, you know, these, these young guys, you know, these have military type equipment, highest grade, highest level, supreme military equipment. Where the hell did they get this stuff? They've taken over large parts of Colorado. They've taken over parts of numerous states. And a lot of people don't want to talk about it because they think it's going to destroy their city or town. They're all over the place. And when they're not, those people running those towns, when they're not, they are going to — they're petrified. They don't want them coming in. In one town in Ohio, as you know, they have a beautiful town of — think of this — 50,000 people, and they dumped 30,000 migrants into the town. So you have 50,000, now you have 30,000 migrants. Springfield, Ohio. It's a beautiful — it's a beautiful place, gorgeous place. And now, if you want to go to the hospital, you can't. If you want to get a checkup, you can't. If you want to find a doctor, you can't. If you want to get your kid into school, you can't. It's a whole different world. It can't be — we can't allow this to happen. They're destroying our country. November 5th, 2024, will be Liberation Day in America. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program of criminals in American history. I will rescue every city and town that has been invaded and conquered. Can you believe I'm running for this great office and I'm talking about rescuing cities and towns that have been invaded and conquered? Can you imagine 10 years ago? Can you imagine 10 years ago using language like that? or saying, we will not allow men to play in women's sport. You know, if, if you go back just 10 years and you move yourself forward and you heard a politician saying, we will not allow men to play in women's sports, they'll think, is this guy crazy? Of course they're not going to play. To expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, and other savage gangs like MS-13, Trende is from Venezuela, Venezuela prison system, and they are rough. They are rough. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. And if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole, because we don't want them back. And I'm hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. And I will ban all sanctuary cities in the United States of America. They're sanctuary for criminals. Four years of Kamala have delivered nothing but economic hell for American workers. The workers are getting destroyed. Her inflation disaster has made life unaffordable and cost families over $30,000 in higher prices. Think of that. Who can afford that? Just days ago, we had the worst jobs report in modern history. I never wanted to be Herbert Hoover, and I'm glad these numbers are coming out now. I'll fix it, but boy, it's getting bad. 12,000 jobs were announced. Now, usually you hear 200, 250, you know, and you hear it for years and years. 12,000 jobs. And then they, then they became frauds. They, it was a fraud on the country because they made up numbers. 30,000 private sector jobs were killed in a single month, and nearly 100,000 manufacturing jobs have been wiped out since just the start of the year. You don't hear these numbers from the fake news. 150,000 Americans joined the unemployment rolls in October. 150,000. These are depression-type numbers. And nearly a quarter of a million people dropped out of the labor force. Just think, a few months ago, they fraudulently claimed 818,000 jobs were created, when, in fact, there were none. They said, 818,000 jobs were created in our country, which kept us — and what that did is it kept us, like, okay. It wasn't great, but it was, like, not record-shattering or anything. But it was a lie, and they thought they'd be able to get away with it until after the election, 
and then announce after the election that they made a mistake. These are bad people. Fortunately, there was a whistleblower who I think should be entitled to an award. Could you imagine if it were me and we lost the election, and then a few days later they say that the job numbers are being revised by almost a million people? And now they've just revised it again on top of the 818,000 112,000 fake jobs were just announced. So you add that up, and it's almost 1 million fraudulent jobs were announced. And nothing happens. These guys don't report about it. If, if, I, if I was talking about, if I was talking about two jobs, it would be like front page on every newspaper. They cheated, and it's fraud. You know, when they make mistakes, they make them for, for 2,000, 3,000. There was never eight. 818,000 jobs right before the election were announced, and they turned out to be a fraud. And they were going to announce the revision after the election was over. What the hell kind of an election would that have been? So I want to thank this whistleblower. Meanwhile, 100 percent of the net jobs created in the last year have gone to migrants. Think of that. 100 percent. 100 percent of the jobs that were created went to migrants, not to people. And I'll tell you what, your black population is being devastated by these people. They're taking all the, the black population jobs away. And w they should announce those numbers before the election also, because, frankly, what's happening there, you're going to see some bad things happen. They're taking their jobs, and the Hispanic population is going to be next. You watch. It's horrible. But if I win, it's going to be not so horrible, because we'll fix it. These are depression-type numbers, and that's where we're heading if she's elected. And if she's elected, we're talking about a 1929-style depression. Under my leadership, we are quickly going to turn this economic nightmare into an economic miracle. We're going to make it a miracle. We will make America wealthy again, and we will make America affordable again. And we're just one day, meaning a half a day, sir, away from the best jobs, the biggest paychecks, and the brightest economic future the world has ever seen. But you must vote. Got to vote. You got to vote. Kamala's plan will impose the largest tax hike in American history. I've never heard anybody campaign. I've done this stuff for long time, but I've been involved for a very long time supporting candidates. And candidates are always saying, we will reduce your taxes, efficiency, all this stuff. They're running on the fact that they're going to raise taxes substantially. I've never heard that. This is the craziest campaign I've ever seen. We will raise your taxes. Vote for us in Mondale. Mondale, he says Mondale. I think you're right. We're going to raise your taxes. But they're going to do that on the typical family, American family. They're raising the taxes more than $3,000 a year. My plan will massively cut taxes for workers and small businesses, that we will have no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax for our great seniors on Social Security benefits. To rapidly reduce inflation, I will end Kamala's war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill, baby, drill, 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 drill. And I will cut your energy prices in half within 12 months. Okay, when that happens, everything's coming down. The donuts are going to come down. The food is going to come down, as we say, the groceries. I just told the story in Pittsburgh. A woman elderly goes to a supermarket and takes three apples and brings the apples to the counter. And then she realizes that the price went up yet again. And she doesn't have the money for them. And she walks. She excuses herself. She walks back to the refrigerator, puts the apple back in refrigeration, and walks back and buys the two apples. That shouldn't be happening in our country. That should not be happening, and we're not going to have it happen long. I will cancel Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate.
and I will make interest on car loans fully tax deductible. So, how about that? Nobody, people, the, the bri most brilliant people. Is that Scott Besant over there? Where's Scott? Scott, stand up. He said he's one of the most brilliant people on Wall Street. Do you agree, Scott, that you're one of the most brilliant people on Wall Street? Because everybody else says it. He's too shy to say it. But he's a genius. You know what his theory is? The stock market is the only sign of life. And it's only going up because everyone thinks Trump is going to win the election. And others, too. Others, too. I'm seeing it a lot. I think they're following your lead. But I appreciate that confidence. It's very nice. He's a brilliant guy. But so they call up and they say, brilliant guys are calling me up. And they say, where'd you come up? On a car loan, we're going to give people, we want to develop the car business of this country. On a car loan, we're going to give people the right to deduct the interest. Deduct interest, but only if the car is made in the USA. What the hell do I care if a car is going to be made in? If a car is going to be made in Japan or China or someplace else, what the hell? I don't care if they buy it. I want them to buy cars. So think of that, what that's going to do for Michigan. So if a car is made in Michigan, you get a big deduction. That's like, that's going to be somebody. So I started just with the deduction. Then I thought to myself, you know, why should I give them a deduction to buy a car that's made in China or Japan or South Korea? Well, I don't, you know, look, I mean, they're wonderful people. Everyone's wonderful, but I want them to be built here. So then I came in with that little extra tip and it says, but you only get the deduction if the car is made in America. Isn't that so cool? And hopefully right here in Detroit and Michigan would be great. We're thrilled to be joined by your next senator, Mike Rogers. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. You're doing great. This guy is doing great. He is amazing. I think you're I'll tell you, you know, it's hard to beat some of these people because they lie. I heard she's another one. She's going around saying she's very close to Trump. She agrees with Donald Trump on the tariffs and the wall and the this, but she never agreed until about two weeks ago when she was losing, right? No, she's doing, but I have about six of them that are doing that. They're doing that with, against Bernie R Marino. They got a guy running against him, Brown, Sherrod Brown. I love President Trump very much. He's great. You know, we're leading. I'm leading, you know how, by like almost 20 points or something. So all of a sudden, they love me. They all love me. And the day after the election, he'll be calling for my impeachment. Let's impeach him. These people are sick. But we have great members, and Mike is, is really a talented guy, respected all over Washington. He was there. He was very successful. And I hope he can represent you, because he's, he's going to be one of the stalwarts. He'll be a leader. Thank you very much. And also members of Congress, John Joyce, Bill Heisinger, Tim Wahlberg, John Molinaire. I saw you guys. Very good speech you guys made. Boy, you really were rocking them, huh? You guys, very different styles, but tremendous talents and really good. Thank you very much. They really are tremendous. You have a great bunch here. I don't say that with all states. Some states I'm not so thrilled, but that's okay. <laughs> And governors, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Where's Sarah? She's so great. She is so great, right? Proud of her. I saw her father the other day. I served on a panel with him. And uh, I said, you know, Mike, I think you're great. He, you know, he endorsed me when I was running. She gave me a four-page endorsement. And I think the endorsement was put out before I finished my speech. And I said, you know, you're great. He said, well, I appreciate that, but my daughter is far greater. How about that? Is that nice? My daughter is greater, he said. And he's not a man without an ego, I will tell you. Right, Sarah? But he said, my daughter is greater. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing that he said. He's an incredible guy. And Doug Burgum, who has become one of the real stars of the party. And Catherine, stand up. I first noticed Doug by looking at Catherine. She was riding a horse in an ad. I said, who the hell is that? But I don't 
look anymore. No, beauty doesn't mean a damn thing to me anymore. It doesn't mean anything, but I did notice there was a woman, and to the left there was a man riding, but I didn't notice him so much. But it was this couple, and you know the ad I'm talking about. It was beautiful. It's like the most beautiful. He looked like the Marlboro Man, whatever happened to him. But what a combination. And he's become one of the most successful governors. What he's done with the fracking and with the oil and gas and everything has become something special. He's done a great job. Thank you both very much for being here. Appreciate it. And former Congresswoman and Democrat candidate for president who did very well. She's — I watched her for a long time. She's a woman of incredible intelligence, but maybe more than anything else, unbelievable common sense and very, very special. She just joined the Republican Party, by the way. She was an independent for years. Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, thank you. And a man who's very special, with a great talent. He was the ambassador to Germany. And I'll never forget when I took him out. The happiest person in the world was Angela Merkel. When Rick Grinnell was taken out, this was the best day in Angela's life. He was our — he was not your typical ambassador. He was somebody who would say, this is no good what's happening. And actually, it was a love-hate. They really loved him, but they said he's a smart one. He was wise to what they were doing. Rick Grinnell. Where is Rick? Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And a woman who uh, ran a very good race. It was a hard race because, you know, she believes in things, that, and she believes in them very strongly. And I say, you always have to stick with your beliefs. It's very tough. Uh, it's, I told her, it's very tough. But she's a hell of a woman. She had a father who I knew. He was a steelman. He was in the steel business. He was thankful when I put the tariffs on because we saved the steel industry. And he was a real pro. He passed away, but he was a great guy. But he'd be very proud of his daughter. His daughter's an incredible woman. Tudor Dixon. Thank you, Tudor. Thank you. We miss your father, right? He was — what a great guy he was. And then we have a woman who drives extremely fast. She can drive a car. And, you know, just very successful. Won races. But she's very successful. It takes tremendous courage and strength and everything else. It takes everything. I think driving those cars at 220 and 240 miles an hour, boy, you got to be brave. Probably have to be a little bit crazy, Danica Bradrick, right? You have to be a little crazy, right? But it's Danica. And such an honor to have you involved, Danica. Such an honor. She's so smart. We were talking about — I'm just — I just can't believe it, how I was asking her questions on the plane over about, how do you do it? How do you do it? Because, you know, they had me in one of these cars that start the race, and I'm sitting in the car, and we're going, like, 60 miles less than what you travel at. And I'm saying to the driver, uh, are you okay? He was okay. But uh, it's an honor to have you involved. You're a really special, really incredible athlete. She's an incredible athlete. And another person that was very honest and very talented and doing an incredible job, but she was extremely honest. And sometimes you can be honest and it doesn't work out, but it's actually worked out really well because she's doing phenomenally well, better than before. Sage Steele. Thank you very much, sir. And Michigan Republican Party Chairman Pete Hoekstra. Now, I told Pete — I've known Pete for a long time. He was very, very successful at everything he did, and he was an ambassador. He was one of the best. And I said, Pete, you got to come in and run the party. You got to do it for me. And it was not that easy. He has a lot of options. And he came in, and I mean, I think we're going to have a great result later. But uh, Pete came in and ran the party, and I'll tell you, it is so organized. It's so professional. I think we're going to win. I mean, I think we're going to win in Michigan. Seems to be. We can't let him forget that I stopped that big Chinese plant in Mexico, Pete. 
put that on top. But no, that was the thing. Nobody else would do that. I did it without being president. They just said, uh, but they know it's not going to be easy for them. They won't. Uh, they're going to, let's put it this way. If they build it, they're going to lose their ass, okay? So I want to thank you, Pete. You've done incredible. And a man who I fell in love with, actually, he's an auto worker and a union guy, but he saw what was happening. He saw the look, I mean, you take a look at this area and go back 50, 60 years, it's been just a downward trend. It looks like, you ever see a chart? It's like, right, Brian? It's like just a downward, like a sliding ramp. Brian Pannebecker from the Auto Workers for Trump. Brian, come up here for a second. Come here. Come here. I got to see it. I love this guy. I want to have, I always wanted arms like him. He's got the biggest, meanest arms. They look like what grabs that rocket. He could grab the rocket. Tell them a little bit about what you see going on. And I tell you, he's just an incredible guy. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to be here at your very last campaign rally. Um, I, gotta, I gotta give a shout out to Scott Hagerstrom right out here. He brought me to Novi when you were holding a rally there in September of 2016. You were a candidate before you were president. And I got backstage and got to meet you. And I told you the, the little song about Macomb County, home of the Reagan Democrats. I said, Mr. Trump, if you come to Macomb County and ask for the Reagan Democrats' support, which is basically the UAW members, and I got a few of them here with me tonight. I said, if you come to Macomb County and ask for the Reagan Democrats' support and you get it, you might win Macomb County big enough to carry the whole state of Michigan. I said, Mr. Trump, if you win Michigan, we both know what that means. You win the White House. And that's exactly what happened. So we're going to do it again this year. The UAW represented auto workers are going to vote 65% or more for Donald Trump for president. And we're going to carry Michigan again. Thank you, Brian. Great guy. Great guy. And you're a great guy. I appreciate that support. I appreciate that support. Thank you very much. It's terrific. You gave us a beauty there, didn't you, huh? He's a worker. Michigan Senate Republican leader, Eric Nesbitt. Eric, thank you very much. Great. Great job. You're doing beautiful. And Michigan House Republican leader, Matt Hall. Tremendous guy. The great Steve Whitcuff, great businessman, the most generous person I know. He gives a lot of money. Every time there's a hurricane, he wants to give money, and he's just great. And Howard Lutnick, uh, he's uh, working along with my children and uh, Linda McMahon, who's fantastic, and they're working on transition. But I said, don't worry about transition. Let's win this thing first, okay? We'll work on transition. But he's one of the most respected people on Wall Street, uh, rebuilt his firm after it was taken out of the World Trade Center by that horror show act. Long ago now, but it's uh, still very emblazoned in all of all of our minds. But uh, so, Howard, thank you very much. Howard Lutnick, thank you very much. And my great children, should I have them come up real fast? Okay. Don. Eric, Tiffany, Laura, Michael, come on up here. And we have Ivanka at home, sitting home, watching every second of it. And we have Baron, my beautiful boy, Baron. Baron, he knows more about computers than anybody. I closed up his computer. He said, Dad, I'll take it two minutes to figure that out. And all of a sudden, the damn thing opened up. I said, Barrett, you got to turn it off. Okay, watch. Re -re I turn it off. It's no way. I put a separate code in. He's operating his computer. He's operating it two minutes later. So this group here, 
They are so committed. They didn't have to do this. I guess we all didn't have to do it, but we have to because they want to see our country be so great and so strong and so respected again. When people laugh at — they're laughing at our leaders. We have a guy can't walk. He can't find the stairways. Look, there's like about six of them up. He finishes his speech. He can't find the stairways. And she's worse than him. You see what's going on. Did you see it tonight? Screaming, we're going to win, we're going to win. And she's screaming, and it's like a hundred people going, what the hell is wrong with her? <laughs> but these people are behind me. I, I love them, but they are really special. They're very talented people. And uh, every one of them. They've been, they've been Maybe I'll ask Laura to start and say a couple of words. Could I do that? She is. She's the chairman of the party. Comes from North Carolina. I wanted her to run for the Senate. There was nobody could have beat her. But she said, you know, I have a great husband and I have beautiful kids and I really want to focus on them for a little while because she's been working hard. And she would have been great. And I said, who do you like? And they said, Ted Budd. And I went to Ted. I said, Ted, do you like it? He said, but I'm not going to run if Laura runs. I said, well, she wants you, she likes you a lot, and he's become a great senator, but she could have. But then she becomes like the chairman along with Michael Watley. Is Michael Watley here someplace? Yes. And, and I wanted the mayor of Hamtramck is here. Come here. We, I didn't see, I see you. This is, come, you got to come up here, please. This guy has been with us almost from the beginning. He is, I'm so glad we got to see you. Hi, Michael. Come here. He has been an unbelievable unifier. This is one of the greatest men in your state, and I want to just thank you. Come here, say a couple of words. Well, good morning. It's another day. I spoke earlier before you came, and I told the crowd that. Uh, Tomorrow, or today, actually, is going to be a historic day, and we shall celebrate a historic victory today. I, I'm very proud that I endorsed President Trump, and I broke the wall of fear among the Arab-American and Muslim-Americans and I destroyed that wall of isolation and the wall of silence and the wall of hesitance among the Arab Americans. And now, today, we had a survey that was posted among the Arab Americans in the Metro Detroit, and it shows that President Trump is leading by 76 percent. And Harris earlier had 3%, and the rest was for others. So we are in a mission to end that disconnect between the minorities and the Republican Party and to make it the party of inclusion. And we are in a mission, which is the priority for us today, to send President Trump back to the White House. So like I said earlier, he has done everything possible to gain your support. He told me last Friday that it was 62 days of hard work with no break and no rest. And today it's 65 days with no rest. So he has used everything possible to gain your support. Hard work, seriousness, comedy, sarcasm, everything. So how is he a threat to our democracy as they keep, the fake news keeps saying, and the other party? So I ask you and I urge you to go out and vote tomorrow. And I think we have a big chance. I'm very optimistic that we will make history and we will win and make America great again. Thank you so much.
Great guy. He's a great man, and I'll tell you, you have hundreds of thousands of people that follow, and uh, that could be a very big uh, difference. They are, the Democrats are not happy about this. This was supposed to be their vote, and they're not at all happy. But uh, really, a great, great, great young guy. He's a young guy, and uh, wow, what a leader. So thank you very much. If we win, this state, you're going to be very responsible for it, too. And I think we will. And tonight, I got — you know, I did a thing a couple of weeks ago with a very smart guy and very special — and a very special talent. He's got the number one podcast, they say, by, like, four times. Joe Rogan. And a lot of people — a lot of people thought they loved that. It was three hours. Oh, it was so terrible because I did it. And I said, Joe, I got a rally of this size waiting for me in a very far away place. I'm going to be very late, like two and a half hours late. But we kept talking. It went three hours and 15 minutes or something. Then when I got up there, it was cold, a little bitter, and everybody waited. Nobody left. And I explained to him, look, Joe is the number one guy he kept me late. But I'm doing it because we have to win. And not one person was unhappy. We had a great time. And I said, we're going to devote a lot more time. It was pretty late at night. It was worse than this, okay? I can tell you. But Joe Rogan just announced — and he doesn't do this at all. I don't think he's ever done it. But he just announced that he's giving me his complete and total endorsement. Could you help him? Wow. So, Laura, would you say a few words, please? <laughs> Are we ready to turn Michigan red today? Today is the day that we send a loud and clear message to the mainstream media, to the establishment, to Hollywood, to the swamp, that it is not them. It is we, the people, who get to choose our president. And we're choosing Donald J. Trump. I just want to say thank you. This is a very special night for our family. This has been almost a decade of doing this, and it has been my honor to be a part of this family to be out speaking on behalf of a man who I love, not just because he's my father-in-law, but because he is going to save this country and going to save the world. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Get everybody out to vote. Thank you, Michigan. Thank you, guys. Today, when you wake up with not very much sleep, you got to get to the polls. You got to bring your friends and your families and your loved ones. And we have to make it too big to rig. Guys, it's simple. It's a unique election. You've lived under both candidates. People like to pretend like it's not the Harris-Biden regime that has destroyed your American dream, our country, our economy, the entire world, and Western civilization. Well, you guys, starting right now, it's on you to reclaim what is yours, your country. It would be an honor for me, for you guys, to show the same amount of resolve that this man showed on July 13th when he took a bullet to the face and came back defiant. You guys take that attitude to the polls, to your text messages, to your friends. If you've early voted, drive 
everyone you know to the polls. That resolve is what kept us at peace. That resolve is what made trade deals. That resolve is going to save America, and it's going to put America first again once and for all. So guys, now, now it's up to you. You make our country proud like he makes us proud each and every day. Let's get it done, America. Let's get it done, Michigan. Let's go. Well, good morning, Michigan. Who else could have this many people at 2 a.m.? Only Donald Trump. Guys, I've watched the hell that they put him through for the last 10 years. I mean, the fake impeachments, the dossiers, the Russia hoax, going after his Supreme Court justices, censoring him, taking away his First Amendment right, trying to take him off the ballots in various states all across the country, raiding his home. And yet he comes out every single day and he fights and he fights and he fights. And when other candidates have packed it in for the night, you know who's standing on the stage at 2 a.m.? It's Donald Trump. America, it's time for us to pick our fighter, and it's that man right there. And I can tell you, as a son, as a family, we have never been more proud of a person in our life. I have never been more proud to stand on a stage with somebody in my life. He's the most remarkable man I know. And I promise you, I will be on the stage till the end of earth with you because I truly believe in you. And I believe what you're doing for this country and what you're doing for our children. And you are going to save democracy in the United States and you're going to keep peace in the world. And I love you and we're proud of you. And let's make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. Hello. So my father has never stopped and he will never stop working for you guys. So let's get out there, let's vote for prosperity, let's vote for the future that we want to have for our children and for our future generations. Thank you. They're my kids, but I'll tell you, they're very good people. They're good people. They're great people that love our country and they're working. They don't have to do this. They don't have to do this. So in conclusion, with your vote, we are going to fire Kamala and we're going to save America. We will cut your taxes, end inflation. Slash your prices, raise your wages, and bring thousands of factories back to America and back to Michigan. And a lot of it will be using my favorite word, my favorite word, tariff. And one of the things I'm going to do, I'll give you this as a little insight. I just announced it in Pittsburgh. I didn't think I'd have, it's become a very big story already, so. We're going to tell Mexico you're killing tremendous numbers of our people by allowing China to send their fentanyl through your system and through your country. And we're going to give them a little period of time. But we don't want drugs coming across our border or any border. And whether it's Mexico or Canada or wherever, because they're starting now in Canada, they're starting to go up north. But whether it's Mexico or Canada, we're going to explain to them quickly that if you allow fentanyl and these drugs to come through through your country, 
We're going to charge you large-scale tariffs on everything you send into the United States. And they're making a lot of money in the United States. They couldn't uh, exist without us. So we're going to do that. And we're going to tell China that if you continue to send fentanyl to Mexico or any place else that comes into our country, we're going to charge you a 25 percent tariff on everything you sell into the United States of America. We're not going to let — we can't let them — and you've never heard that from anybody but me. And I've had it in my mind for a long time, but I didn't want to tell these guys about it because they'd only screw it up like they do everything else. But I say it now because now — because now we have the election coming up in a matter of hours, hours, hours. And uh, we're not going to let them destroy our country. Most of our crime, probably 60 percent of our crime, is caused by drugs. People that are taking drugs, they cause tremendous amounts of crime. If we didn't have that, you'd see crime rates plummet. But, you know, the sad thing is that crime is plummeting all over the world because they're sending their criminals, they're sending their gang members, they're sending their drug dealers, they're sending their mental patients from all of these institutions. They're sending them into our country, and then they're, they're opening up. Oh, we're sending them back. Don't worry about it. They're opening up their prisons, and they're dumping their prisons. All their prison population, Venezuela, they're way down. Their crime rate went way down because they're taking all of their criminals and terrorists and all of the people that are causing all the problems. And then on top of it, they're emptying their jails out into the United States through this very stupid person's open border. I don't know what they're thinking about. But they uh, — maybe they hate our country, or maybe they want to get people registered to vote. Who the hell knows? But we're not going to allow it. It's going to stop immediately, day one. We're going to build America. We're going to buy America, and we will hire America. I will end the war in Ukraine. Would have never started if I were president. You know, we got more votes. We did great in 2016. We did better in 2020. We got more votes in 2020 than any president by millions, any president in the history of our country. And because of that, I said, I'll sit back and I'll watch. And if they do a bad job — I didn't need this, <laughs> let me tell you. But if they do a bad job, I'm going to run because of how well we did. And if they do a good job, I would actually prefer that they did a great job. If they did a great job, I would say that's a, a great thing. But. I mean, he's the worst president in the history of our country. She's the worst vice president, and she got no votes. You know, they like to see — they like to say — they like to say to me, uh, that's not the democratic way to go. You know, it's not it's, — it's just a terrible thing. It's not a — it's just a terrible thing, it's what's going on in this country. But so I sat back, and I watched, and I saw all the horrible things that were happening. And you know what they are. And maybe the worst was what they've done with inflation, but I actually think the worst is what they've done with their border, because we're — they're destroying our country. We're going to turn it around. We're going to change it really fast. We're going to have the greatest country we've ever had. I will stop the chaos in the Middle East. It would have never happened again. Israel would have never been attacked on October 7th. And I will prevent World War III from happening. I know all the players. And it's a very good chance that it will indeed happen. We will crush violent crime and give our police the support, protection, resources, and respect that they so dearly deserve. We will strengthen and modernize our military. They gave so much of it away to Afghanistan. It's so crazy. I rebuilt our military. We will build a missile defense shield around our country, all made in the USA, and much of it made right here. And Ronald Reagan wanted to do it many years ago, and he really was right, other than we did not have the technology. I'm glad we didn't do it. But now we can shoot a needle out of the air. We can shoot a little pin out of the air. It's incredible technology, our technology. 
We will rebuild our cities, including our capital in Washington, D.C., which is in terrible shape with graffitis on the beautiful, incredible marble columns and painting the lions and burning the American flag. What they did a month ago was terrible. But we're going to make our city safe and clean and beautiful again. We'll work with Democrat governors and mayors. We'll probably have to, and that's okay. We will teach our children to love our country, to honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. We will get critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our schools. And we will keep men out of women's sports. I will defend religious liberty. I will restore free speech. And I will defend the right to keep and bear arms, our Second Amendment. And after years of building up foreign nations, defending foreign borders, and protecting foreign lands, we will finally be going to build up our borders, build up our country, and build up and protect our citizens this time. It's called America First. We're going to put America first. We put America last. They put America last. We put America first. And it doesn't mean we're into isolation. We're not. We're going to help the world, but we have to straighten ourselves out, or we won't be able to help anything. And we will stop illegal immigration once and for all. We will not be invaded. We will not be occupied. We will not be overrun. We will not be conquered. We will be a free and proud nation once again, and that will take place rapidly. Everyone will prosper. Every family will thrive. And every day will be filled with the opportunity and hope. And maybe above all, the American dream will be back. It's going to come back. We're bringing it back for your children. And we're bringing it back for yourselves. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and stop the radical left agenda with a landslide victory that is too big to rig. Too big. The silent majority is back, and tomorrow you need to get out and vote. We have a silent majority, but we're just sort of speaking up. This is shown at the level of Enthusiasm is five times greater than their level. They have no level of enthusiasm. They don't believe in her. They know she shouldn't even be running. They are, as they say, a threat to democracy. What they've done is a threat to democracy. They stole the presidency away from a very angry man. I watched him last night. He's a very angry man. I'm convinced that he likes me more than he likes Kamala. I'm convinced. <laughs> For the past nine years, we have been fighting against the most sinister and corrupt forces on Earth. With your vote in this election, you can show them once and for all that this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. It was the hardworking patriots like you who built this country. And tomorrow, it is the hardworking patriots, meaning today, like you, who are going to save our country. After all we've been through, and we've been through a lot together. We've gone through these rallies. Almost everybody is here. I have people that have been to more than 300 rallies. They're here tonight. They were at the one this morning, the one tonight. They actually missed two of them. I can't even believe it. But these are incredible people and incredible patriots. But we stand on the verge of the four greatest years in American history. With your help, we will restore America's promise and we will take back the nation that we love. We love this nation. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down and we will never, ever surrender. Together, we will fight, 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 and we will win, win, win. November 5th, today, will be the most important day in the history of our country. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. 
We will make America healthy again. Bobby Kennedy, Jr. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. I love you. I love you all. God bless you. God bless you, Michigan. God bless the United States of America. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great honor. Thank you.